Hello and welcome to the latest ep episode of Spotlight on Security Tech Insights. My name is Shelly Calhoun-Jones and I'm a Principal Technologist here at Cohesity. And today we're joined by Amir from Normalize. Amir, would you like to do an introduction? Uh, thank you for having me, Shelly. My name is Amir Deba. I am uh, the CEO and co-founder of Normalize. Um, it's uh, Normalize as a data security uh, sort of platform uh, for to help customers uh, discover, classify, uh, and secure their data at scale across all clouds, uh, SaaS, and on-prem. Mayor, it's wonderful to have you. In this episode, we're going to be talking about data security posture management and how yes. you can utilize this type of approach to gain visibility into where your sensitive data is located, how it's being used, and the security of your data. Yes. You know, this is a challenge for a lot of companies out there because it can sometimes feel like the Wild West. Not only are you dealing with large volumes of data, but you're also having to manage hybrid and sometimes multi-cloud environments. And so what we've seen is there's been a shift towards focusing on the data itself and also using um, technologies like intelligent automation mm -hmm. to help improve uh, your security posture. Amir, based on your experience, what are some of the challenges that organizations are running into with maintaining their data security? Well, the first uh, challenge I think that that every organization and customer we talk to is um, is really the scale of the problem because now data is everywhere. It's um, it's of course we have it, we had a lot of it on prem, but now we're moving a lot of it um, to the cloud and. Uh, with that comes kind of its own set of challenges because it it goes across multi-cloud environments, um, various type of applications uh, that are changing very frequently, and and with those change comes a lot of uh, challenges and risks associated with it because um, it can be done in a, in a you know during the CI/CD cycle, um, and sometimes configuration change around the data and. A lot of risks that get exposed that that can put that data data at risk or make it more compromisable. So um, that's usually where customers initially struggle is to figure out, you know, where are their most important assets? With what, where are the jewels or the critical data that uh, that is spread across their various environments across clouds? Uh, is it moving to different SaaS environments without now them knowing? Um, and it also within, as of course, on-prem, how they get that kind of ongoing visibility to see where that data is and how that data is moving within the environment, who is accessing that data and how they're accessing it. Is it, is it a legitimate access or is that access um, being done in a, in, a, in a way that could also cause more risk around the data and can lead to data breaches? So uh, it's really, you know, it's, um, I was at a very important technology conference last, uh, last week and um, one of the customers was saying that, you know, they had you know, hundreds of petabytes of data already accumulated in their environment and half of it is just moving to the cloud, to various clouds. And what they're struggling with is really getting that ongoing understanding and visibility of where that data is, what's in it, um, how valuable it is to the business, uh, where are the risks around it and how how to manage compliance and to answer these questions about the data with confidence, which is now a big ask from the CISO and the security teams. Right. Yeah, I know for a lot of companies out there, especially if you've gone through a recent acquisition, you may have an entirely different set of cloud accounts yeah. within your organization that you may not really be aware yeah, about. You don't know about. And we see that with customers all the time. <laughs> Where, oh yeah, we know where our data is. The first thing they they say, and then once we start and we engage with them, all of a sudden there's new accounts that pop up that we're not aware of it, and even in different geographies or time zones that that they weren't even aware of it. So this is really what the SPM you know helps you kind of helps you do at scale. The first thing I think that the SPM provides to customers is that giving you that ongoing visibility. So you really know where the data is. It puts data at the center of your security operations and give you that visibility and control and trust around your data. So you know what you have. And then from there, you can understand the security posture around it and then devise what you need to do to, to um, either you know, fix these problems or 
put the framework you need around it so you can make that data secure. Yeah, it's funny that you mention um, misconfigurations because that's actually in the top 10 uh, security risks that we've seen with the uh, open web application yeah. security project. You know, and this could be anything from a misconfigured storage share. It could be logging is turned off. You know, for a lot of organizations out there, they're looking for a way to make sure that they're following the same security baseline across their cloud accounts, whether they be Microsoft or AWS. Mm -hmm. How would a DSPM address or identify uh, these type of vulnerabilities? Uh, very good question, Shelley. So misconfigurations, as you know, they happen everywhere, especially in cloud because of you know the fast changes in the CI/CD <laughs> cycle. Uh, various cloud environments also sometimes you know it's easier or harder to do one thing versus another thing from one cloud to the other. Um, and and you know you as you're moving as you're moving applications from development to QA to pre-production to production, you know a lot of changes happens along the way that could also leads to some of these misconfigurations. But and 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 when you when you when you plug in a security a cloud security tool, typically you get end up with hundreds of alerts that come at you, and most of them a lot of them actually are configuration. Um, uh, about about configurations or misconfigurations in your environment, but the, what what I think was more important moving forward is to understand what these misconfiguration lead to. Are they connected to any sensitive data within your environment? Are they creating any risks around that sensitive data? That is the most important to you. Um, if they are, then great. You need to pay attention to them quickly, but. If in many cases, sometimes they lead to nothing, it's a misconfiguration in the environment, so what? I mean, of course, at some point you need to address it and understand why it is like that. And in, in some cases, it could be a there's a valid reason for it. But um, what's most important, I think what, what the SPM brings to the equation, it kind of brings more context around these, these misconfigurations concerns that we see in, um, in cloud environments and help you focus on what's important first, which is, Where's the sensitive data? What's the monetary value of that data? So if it was to get compromised, what's the cost of that compromise to you? And that information, then you can use it to prioritize remediation, to fix these misconfigurations faster, and also to, um, you know, at some point, if you need that, then you could use it to validate more, how to get more budget or to get more resources or headcount to help you move these, move these things faster and fix them faster. It's interesting that you mentioned that it's like really identifying the the risk that you really need to focus on because any security practitioner will know there's no way that you can completely eliminate risk. Correct. So you really need to focus on what's yeah. what's yeah. the most important. So yeah. that's, and, that's and and uh, alert fatigue. I think if you talk to every uh, cybersecurity professional that lives in a SOC and gets it's and 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 they just they're they're bombarded with these alerts. So misconfiguration here, a change there, you know, a vulnerability showed up in the environment all of a sudden, but they're always trying to connect these dots and right. they're always trying to understand what's important first and why they need to pay attention to it first and fix it or drive remediation with their DevOps team sooner and faster. And I think that's what really the SPM uniquely does because it brings into an equation a very important element that, that security teams didn't have before which is the visibility of where the data is, how sensitive it is, how valuable it is, and all that context can be used to, to, to basically drive remediation faster and quicker and prevent breaches. Yep, no, that's, that's a really good point. I, I used to uh, teach for Amazon and my students would often you know, talk to me about how they're in the middle of their multi-year cloud migration journey. But you know, even during that migration, they wanna make sure that they're, you know setting the correct level of security yeah. um, and making sure that also they have the ability to kind of consolidate, you know, what's important and what's not important because for a lot of teams out there, they could be constantly spinning up uh, resources all the time and tearing them down if they're deploying test environments for the applications that they're developing. Correct. And yeah. So, you know, kind of based off of your experience, you know, with companies taking this more of a cloud first type approach, how, how do you how do you envision or how are you, how are your customers uh, using this type of platform within their environment? Right. So um, 
what we've seen, I mean, it's uh, what we've seen with uh, especially, you know, BSPM is fairly a new category. You know, it's been developing over the last uh, couple of years. And there's a lot of innovation in the space uh, simply because I think finally uh, the security industry is realizing that this is a big problem that we really need to solve and solve it in a multi in a multi hybrid cloud environment. You know, so we're seeing a lot of innovation in the space from us and other other solutions out there to really help customers initially. Um, first of all, kind of connect to their cloud environments in a seamless and frictionless way too, because um, you know it's it's a DLP tools from the past don't have a very good reputation. They were hard to deploy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so that's the, pretty much the, the impression we get from everyone we talk to. They're hard to deploy. Uh, the ROI wasn't there. The time to value can take months, if not years. Um, and the SPM flips all of that on its head, really. It, it's, um, you can deploy it very quickly. It's typically an agentless uh, solution that can uh, connect to the cloud environment, to the various clouds, IaaS, SaaS, PaaS, uh, and even on-prem in a frictionless manner. So um, connects to the data where the data is typically. So to discover it first, see where, what, where, what, what's out there, but most importantly, to understand what's in the data, to really scan the data in detail and give you the information you need, where do you have PII data, where you have HIPAA data, where you have PCI data um, at the status store level, at the location level, at the cloud level, you know, depending again on, on the, the various, how, how you're deploying it and the, the workflows you're deploying around it. Um, so the first step, it provides that, that ongoing continuous visibility um, in a frictionless manner. So, you know, I don't want to say within hours, but maybe within days, within a week or a couple of weeks from the time, you have deployed, you're getting immediately that value to see where, where the data is in the environment and start connecting the data to the various telemetry that you have from, from around, around the data, the context around it, the applications it's in, the access to the data, who's accessing the data, what type of access they have. Um, is it is it access, access for a long period of time? Is there a lot of activity happening around the data that can cause you cause the, cause the attention or someone to review what's happening. So all that telemetry, you bring it all together around the data in a uniform, in one uniform platform that connects it together in a very functional and meaningful way with the, with the reporting and the workflows and the dashboards around it. So you can understand what's going on and drive remediation and start focusing on the risks around the data that are very important. Um, and typically these deployments, you know, we see customers use cases start initially, they want to get discovery, then they want to know what's in the data, like after they discover their data stores structured and unstructured. And then after that, they start saying who has access. So they want to apply kind of what, what we call in the industry, the least privileged access to the data, because if Shelly has an access to a data store, but you that has sensitive information, but you haven't used it or logged in for eight months, why should you have access to it right now? It's just another risk risk factor that's unnecessary. So that's applying that least privileged access to the data is very important use case to a lot of customers. And then after that comes understanding the risks around the data and driving remediation. This is when you say a data store, for example, as an S3 bucket is accessible by, uh, by an EC2 instance that has access to the internet, but that S3 bucket, for example, has sensitive data. So that connecting those dots around the sensitive data, which is access and, uh, and, uh, and additional, it could be additional vulnerabilities or additional data points, connecting them all together to understand these attack paths to sensitive data becomes um, you know, very crucial. So you can, you can identify them quickly and fix them. Um, and of course, the last piece that comes a lot of, a lot, a lot of customers wants to pay attention to is compliance. How do we take all that information that we're collecting around the data to manage our compliance frameworks better and faster and answer the compliance questions with confidence? Do you have GDPR data in the US? Yes or no. Uh, typically before you have to go and ask different people and query multiple solutions that don't integrate well together to get this information. And now you, you have a much better consistent way to answer these questions with confidence, which is what CISOs love to, love to hear. That's always the dreaded word. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah. So, uh, so, anything that has data compliance is a big component of it. And I think, you know, we're seeing a lot of now frameworks that are very specific to certain regions and geographies, which are very much focused around answering a lot of questions around the data and answering these questions, not once a year, but on an ongoing basis. So uh, when you present to your board, when you present to your regulators, when you present to your customers, you can answer these questions about the data you're storing for them. You answer it with, with confidence. That's, that's a really good, good mention though on the, the governance and compliance. And I know for a lot of my, my students that I've worked with in the past or customers I've worked with in the past, they're looking for ways to automate that um, using yes. tools like infrastructure as code where they have a set of requirements that they want to implement maybe into their OS images or applications. And so they hand it off to a team of developers to create yeah. uh, templates for that. Uh, can, I, can a data- I think automation is very important also. One thing the SVM really helps um, customers do better is the automation component around data, you know, and integrating that process better into the DevOps cycle. So not you can only, not only you can remediate uh, these risks faster, but also as you are developing new applications and push and, and taking them into through the de DevOps cycle, you can integrate the, S the SVM into the process. So at every step along the way, you make sure the data you're collecting is secure and um, and there are the, the 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 right telemetry is collected and used to make sure as you push the as you push your application into production, you have put, you have your the data data the data you're collecting or you'll be collecting in the future will be monitored on an ongoing basis and will remain secure. That's awesome. So everything is documented along the way. Correct. And you have the yes. ability to roll back. Yeah. That's great. Now, from a security perspective, you know we've seen a, a you know a large uptick in ransomware variants coming over coming out over the last couple of years. Um, in fact, I think this year we we saw a couple of variants attacking you know uh, VMware ESX servers. So it's mm -hmm. becoming more prevalent. Um, now, from a recovery perspective, you know we want to make sure that we have the ability to recover quickly, but we also want to make sure on these critical servers that we have the ability to, you know, quickly identify what type of data that we're backing up. Yeah. Now, from a backup and recovery perspective, how could a DSPM assist with that? Great. If you're dealing with uh, an active incident. Very good question. And that's why we announced uh, our partnership with Cohesity mainly to, to address this problem. And of course, um, you know, Cohesity has a great reputation for kind of helping customers back up their data and prevent to, to prevent uh, basically uh, prevent ransomware attacks and and at that level and you know what with the integration with the spm what it does it really helps first of all customers understand uh, where the send, where the most critical data is is it really backed up or not and if it's not backed up it can alert with the cohesity through the through cohesity integration create proper workflows to get it backed up immediately and um you know and then second um, one, if, if that data has any risks or active risks around it that can lead to ransomware, for example, or to other, which is some of the risks, that type of risks we identify, that then, then the integration with Cohesity can also be, be used in real time to make sure that, that these data stores are, have the right protection solutions in place. And as like either as, as a mitigation point of view or as another um, as another uh, point solution to fix these problems automatically. So um, you know we 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 part we we partner with Cohesity on this initiatives because it kind of gives customer an end-to-end -end solution to secure their data from discovery to classification to understanding where the sensitive data and the risks around it, but to provide the protection element on an ongoing basis. So um, if, it, if that data were to be breached, then you can recover quickly and you can make sure you're up and running very quickly. And if this data has risks around it that can lead to ransomware, that you can make sure you have the right uh, mitigation uh, solutions in place so you can protect it in the future from any ransomware attacks. That's and amazing. It's, a, it's that, that kind of tight integration will give also customers the ability to 
you know, to really get the visibility on an ongoing basis and to get a pr protection of their sensitive data on, on, on an ongoing basis. Um, uh, you know, it's really providing the ability to protect, to, to understand the posture and to make sure that that data is resilient. So kind of from, from any cyber attacks or ransomware, um, which is now, as you know, becoming a, a big trend that we continue to see it at various scales and different different industries, healthcare got hit the most of it, but also a lot of financials and retailers and as medium medium to large enterprises have been faced with these challenges recently. And academic and academic enough. academia, absolutely. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's that's wonderful. Um, you know, just from a security perspective, having the ability to readily identify uh, your sensitive data, it's going to give you the ability to set more granular security controls uh, within your environment. Yes, yes. Security controls to to be to, for, from a proactive stance, but also from a, you know, in yeah, even after that, after, after, for example, a breach happens, if you know that the breach happened on sensitive data, then you can set different workflows immediately to take place. So you can recover fast, you can change, change what you need to change quickly and and then be up and running kind of at um, in, in no time. That's wonderful. Amir, it's been great having you. Um, before we wrap up for today, uh, any any other uh, thoughts that you want to share with the audience? What I'd like to share with the audience that, you know, we I, I understand like the past about, you know, DLP solutions and and data security and all of that wasn't wasn't really a, um, a uh, they didn't, in some cases they deployed and didn't have the right kind of success uh, come out of it. But I think now with, with the new, with the new DSPM solutions uh, and all this innovation happening in the space, there's a much better way to do it. And I encourage every, every customer and to look into it or start looking into it. Um, DSPM is gonna solve a big, it's gonna really, it's the future of data security. Uh, it's consolidating all best practices we've learned over the years around data security and bringing it to customers in a, in a really frictionless way that can help customers deploy fast, get value um, quickly, and at the end of the day, really do what's, what's, what's important for them, which is prevent data breaches from happening and, and protect customers' data, users' data, all the information, the most important information they have at hand. Um, so it's kind of, uh, for me, it's a, it's a calling to the industry to, to jump behind us and to, to start, uh, to, to really start deploying the SPM so we could just make sure all our data is, is protected and safe and secure. It's been wonderful having you. Um, I do want to encourage the audience to go out to normalize.com to learn more about the SPM. Uh, you can also go to cohesity.com to learn more about our integration, which is going to give you the ability to quickly identify and evaluate your workloads for sensitive data. So this is a great way to be more proactive and um, make sure that your data is safe. Yes, we have the integration um, showcase on our homepage. Uh, there's a lot of resources for customers to know, to learn how the integration between Normalize and Cohesity works. And there's a, a, a couple of upcoming webinars that are scheduled that are going to do deep dives about it. So hopefully you can join us then. Definitely. Look forward to it. Thank you well, all. It's been great having you. And uh, this wraps up another episode of Cohesity Tech Insights. Thanks for watching, everyone.